Robbie. I'm Lee. And I'm Alex. We're going to take a deeper look at culture and philosophy behind martial arts. Hello, welcome to episode 26 of Combat Thoughts. This week we're talking to Abby O'Toole, the armbar queen. Um, we get into her origins of jiu-jitsu, we get into her competition experience, and we talk about maybe why she doesn't want to be the armbar queen anymore. So I hope you enjoy. Start at the beginning, Abby. Was, was jiu-jitsu even the first one you got into? Uh, yeah, it was. I was, um, so I was like looking at a few different types of martial arts. Like I wanted to do MMA initially, but then mm-hmm. I didn't know that that was like a single, I didn't know you could train it. So I was like, oh, I need to do all the other little things to get into it. And um, I sort of was going to do judo. And then the academy that I looked at, the instructor was gone for two weeks and I'm so impatient. So I was like, okay, judo is off now. <laughs> I need to find something else. And then just like Google jujitsu and just turned up. I had no idea what it was about. Just did my first lesson and hated it, but then stuck with it because I was really stubborn. So was it, was it uh, pure like uh, BJJ or, uh, or or was it the, the Japanese jujitsu? No, it was was the pure one. It was the good stuff. It was uh, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> I like how you said the pure one, and we just went. <laughs> yeah. Nice. How long ago was that then? Because you were a blue belt by the time we met you, um, which I don't know if that even means anything. Because I ended up being a white belt for like four years, so. I've no yeah, idea you were you really you were at white belt for ages. Most so dangerous white belt, belt in the yeah. most dangerous white belt in the country at one point. Yeah, with the the Glios, uh, Glios um, grappling hammer, which was great. That was good fun, um, actually. I started in November 2013, and which seems so long ago now. It's like nearly seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I well, when I started, I sort of did like a few lessons here and there, um, and it took me a while to sort of become really into it. So. I say November 2013, but I did like maybe two classes Mm -hmm. from November to um, like the new year. So yeah, it was so long ago. How come you didn't get, because obviously you're pretty hooked on it now. Like what was it you, how come you didn't get hooked at the start? Um, It was, I think it was like dealing with the close contact with people, especially guys. I found it really strange to sort of like have your legs wrapped around people. And then Hmm. um, I felt really rubbish as well. Because I was like the only girl for a while. And, you know, like when when you're much smaller, techniques just don't seem to work initially. So I was like, God, this is so hard. Why would I pay to do this? (laughs) But then I got like my first stripe. So I was like, okay, like I'm finally getting getting somewhere. And then after that, all I wanted was my blue belt. So I'm just going to earn my blue belt and then see what happens after that. So I just like a lot of kind of... I want to see the progression so that's fair Mm -hmm. enough yeah Yeah. and how long ago did the armbar obsession come on Uh, that was at blue belt okay a little Uh, later yeah it was a little later I think it was the first submission I was taught and then I was like oh this is really cool I found it like really difficult um and then yeah I think I just became obsessed with trying to get that one submission and it happened in tournament quite a lot Mm -hmm. my triangles are trash so I had to find another submission that would work for me I've kind of wondered about this because it it seems to be a move that a lot of women like in particular like I don't really know many guys who are obsessed with arm bars guys get obsessed with like kimuras and guillotines or leg locks but that's different do you have any idea why it is because I still haven't got a good reason why arm bars like girls love arm bars for some reason I think it's because like you mainly use like your hips. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like, cause it's like your whole body against an arm, Mm -hmm. you know? But then if I like, say if I was to choose like a Kimura, for example, like generally I'm never going to be as strong as my arms never going to be as strong as someone else's arm, like a guy's arm. So yeah, I don't know. Just, I think, I think it's just, you can, you have more leverage because you're just like attached to the whole arm. 
Yeah, no, I see that because I mean, um, I know you know Suzanne Wilson. Yeah, yeah, I know Suzanne. Yeah, because everyone like again, all girls seem to know each other. Like in south south of England, yeah. MMA and Jiu Jitsu, everyone knows each other. Suzanne <laughs> at least used to love arm bars as well. She's really small. Yeah, she's she's much lighter. She's probably like light feather, maybe smaller than that. I'm not sure because I can never even remember the jiu-jitsu classes, but I'm pretty sure that MMA, she should be like atom weight or something. Okay. I don't know what that is. Is that like 105 pounds or something? All right. You know what? Neither of us have any idea about the uh, other classes. <laughs> I, I'm just making it up. I'm just thinking of a number. Um, yeah, I met Suzanne uh, a few years ago because I went to Impact mm -hmm. for a training session and met her there. She's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Were you going to say something, Alex? No, nothing really. I was just going to say that she's yeah. She we had her on uh, on the podcast. Uh, it was really really good. Nice. All right. So got the. So when did you did you start competing at white belt or at blue belt then? Because I know obviously now you're pretty into competing as well. So I kind of wondered where that came from. Yeah, uh, I started competing <clears throat> at white belt after about like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know where I got the idea to compete from, but I just thought like the whole team, like so I was training at Wave at the time and the whole, the whole team were down, uh, they were going to Cleos. So I was like, oh, okay, like I'll do, I'll do this competition. But I, it, I've never been so anxious for anything, mm. like any exam, like this was just, it was so like anxiety inducing. But then like I did quite well and then just was like, oh, this is, I'm quite good at this. Mm -hmm. That's since changed, but um yeah, I really liked it at White Belt. Nice. Uh, wait, so you you were training at Wave then? Yeah. Is that the first gym you were at? or? Yeah, that was the first gym, and I was there for about three years. And then I went down to Southampton. Mm -hmm. and... yeah. was, that, was that like the first real competition that you ever did in terms of, you know, what I'm thinking is, um, were you uh, ever competing in other sports? Uh, or was it kind yeah. of a sport that you you first really started competing in yeah I I'd never really I mean if football counts I used to do a few matches mm -hmm. when I was 11 but okay. then other than that I've never done anything like competitive sure so, and yeah, it's different being one. individual as well so yeah because if you lose like it's on you and like mm. you know you are literally like on the map with one other person so it feels a little bit more intense yeah, absolutely. Where do you think all the nervousness comes from, though, if that was the most terrifying thing? Because really, the consequences realistically aren't actually that high. I'm sure if you don't yeah, tap, something bad will happen. But I think it was because like everyone's watching. And then if you lose, it's sort of embarrassing and you might end up on like a highlight reel. I think <laughs> that's the worst thing that could happen. Um, but then it's like being a perfectionist as well. Yeah. I can't really yeah, I mean, pinpoint it myself when it comes to to like pre pre competition jitters. I can't really pinpoint it. It's just like a a sort of baseline that's just there, and yeah, I don't know. It's it doesn't really go away that easily. <laughs> no, you think it would go away over time, but I don't feel like it has. Will you still I feel mean, that guess, bad? Yeah, I mean, for super fights, it's. It's worse, I think. I think super fights are, are really, are really intense and kind of make me feel super anxious. But tournaments, I guess, like there's loads more people on the map, so like no one really cares about you. So it's, anyway. so it's very much performance anxiety thing for you then. Yeah, definitely. Like, do yeah. you get the sort? Do you get a sort of similar thing with um, like public speaking or anything like that? Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yes, just yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. I, I've often thought that, especially about um, because I'll find it. I find MMA makes it worse, um, but I think that's purely because they film it, mm. and because yeah. it's way because I know they film. You'll film jujitsu matches, but no one really watches them. You're the only one who watches them afterwards, unless yeah. you get some crazy highlight reel. But MMA and Muay Thai and stuff like that, when it gets filmed and it gets like put up online, 
yeah. that's when I feel the anxiety really kicks in. Yeah, plus you're getting hit in the face as well. And... The consequences are a bit higher, aren't they? So... Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, I don't find that's really that much of a... Okay, yeah, uh, that's not the driver. <laughs> it makes me a bit nervous beforehand, but every time I've been hit and just gone, oh, that's not so bad. Yeah. And at this point, I kind of know I'm going to do that. Yeah. I mean, I think if I walked in there and then someone like flew at me with a knee in the face, I might be a bit more upset. I might be a bit more nervous about that. But, um, you know, generally, I just don't think it's the getting hit part that makes me so nervous because I'm going to get hit in sparring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I suppose. Do you do you like um, like proper hits in sparring? Or is it just sort of like light punches? Um, that depends if uh, you're talking about back when we were at Southampton or not because <laughs> Southampton I remember doing some stupid shit like uh what's his name uh Ali were you there when uh, Ali was there Alex no uh um I, I we would really lay into each other since then I've toned it back and been a bit smarter about it but um <laughs> it wasn't the getting hit that would make me nervous because of that yeah but um, all right, so we're getting away from it a bit then. So uh, the jiu-jitsu part, and uh, so you competed about a year and a half in. You're at Wave at that point. Did quite well. Then came yeah. over to Southampton. Yeah, and I was there sort of on a... Um, I was only in Southampton for a year because of... I was like trying to do a science foundation year to get into zoology. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Southampton was the only place that would have me. Um, but it was still like, I had a great time um, and you know, I was training with uh, Jimmy Johnston at Phoenix. Yeah. As well yeah. As bye to you guys as well. Yeah, you, you came and dropped into ours, but I think maybe being the only coloured belt might have meant that you were a bit, um, yeah, we we're, were a little bit below your level, I think, with uh, half <laughs> of the people there never having rolled before. No, I don't, I don't think it's, you're not like below my level or anything. I think it's more like I just didn't really like no gi at the time. Mm -hmm. But you did, did you do any gi sessions? I feel like there was a few. Very few, I think. Yeah. We would do them on a Monday after the no gi sessions. I think part of the trouble yeah. was that university, we didn't want to have a big barrier to entry and making people yeah, buy, expensive. yeah, making people buy a 60 quid gi or how much they cost not ideal yeah. it was quite funny though i remember one year we did the taster session and just one guy one guy had done it before and turned up in his gi and it was just this one bloke and this bright white thing standing out in the middle of everyone else <laughs> it wasn't good but um <laughs> it was good to see people interested yeah. um how was training with jimmy and everyone at, at phoenix i've never been there it was good it was in like a small sort of industrial unit um so there wasn't really it was basically just the mat and like one toilet uh, so it was very like you know like you just went and trained and it was it was great there was quite a few um like um higher belts as well which I sort of still like training with a uh, Joe who runs Raina she was great um do you know Raina the female jiu-jitsu brand I'm afraid not Oh, it's, it's basically just like um sort of like just uh female only geese and rash guards that's cool i'm sure a guy could wear them as well but um yeah it was, it was really good to sort of like train with more women as well mm -hmm. and was, yeah i enjoy i, enjoy, I enjoyed training there and sort of pop in down to bournemouth once in a while as well to the head, headquarters and would that be the first time you trained with many women if the, if you were the only girl at, the, at wave yeah, well, so at Wave, there would be some women sort of like popping down. There was only like, it was me and like one other woman who was consistent. Um, and her name's Carolina. She's at 10th Planet now, I'm not too sure. Just like mm. listing all these women that you might possibly know. <laughs> no, I'm afraid uh, not. <laughs> it sounds like a so, Polish <laughs> name, but I might be screwing it. Yeah. Just because yeah, I'm Polish, Polish, so <laughs> I sense it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there was uh, Leah Bud at Phoenix at the same time, uh, so that was great to train with her as well. How do you feel that? Like, do you feel like kind of influenced how you trained or like how you saw it? Like how, how did it change when you got to Phoenix about training, or was there any difference at all? I think the level was higher than Wave. I don't want to sound bitchy. 
<laughs> but <laughs> the level was um yeah it was the level was higher there was a lot of like uh smaller people as well mm. um yeah I and i think like whenever you being... sorry no go yeah. ahead no i was just gonna say like whenever you go to a new gym you tend to see sort of a lot more varied techniques so i was like being shown some things i'd never seen before and i was like oh this is really cool and yeah it's really it really helped my game but i i took it too far because i ended up going to like so many other gyms and <laughs> so I've now found one i'm gonna stay at forever <laughs> until i go with that part anyway how many have you been to then because you've only named two or we won't count southampton um but then obviously mill hill yeah, I was at Mill Hill. I was at Colson's for three months. Okay. I went to, um, I did like a month at Fight Zone, but that was to just do some nogi because I wasn't getting enough nogi. And then I see, you know, like when you visit other academies for like open mats. Yeah. Mm. But um, I guess Mill Hill, I was there for like two years. So it was quite a long time. Mm hmm. Compared to How have you found then your belt progression being affected by this? Because as far as like I've seen it myself is that, you know, if you move to a, a different gym, you're kind of putting in Im like impediment into your journey with your belt. Um, so, you know, do you think that's why it is maybe taking you a bit longer to, to get to purple belt? Yeah, I was a blue belt for like three and a half years. So um because I had my fourth stripe and then it took like another year after that to get the purple belt um I think it's more like when you join a new team they don't know if you're gonna stay because mm -hmm. I guess if you've got like a history of like gym hopping I can see why they would not want to promote someone very quickly uh, and you sort of have to prove yourself as well so it does add a lot of extra time mm -hmm. But I think I think I'm quite comfortable at purple belt now, and I wouldn't. So I've been I would have been a purple for two years in February, but I do not want to accelerate that at all. I don't want to get a brown belt for ages, especially <laughs> with the pandemic. I want to try and win some more medals. So. <laughs> yeah, um, I I completely sympathise with the uh, taking a little bit longer to get a belt. At least you had a colour on yours before you were. Uh before you got stifled yeah. for ages no i think if you if you're a white belt and then you go to another gym i feel like they make you wait like a year just make you wait ages yeah 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 absolutely i feel like i've i've just moved so it's gonna happen to me it's gonna be another another year before yeah. any if you can't stick with anything you've been looking through like five jobs <laughs> yeah. since yeah. a year ago that's that's a different problem all right well <laughs> we'll, we'll skip over that um <laughs> How, and, and so do you think it's like affected your game then? Because you say you get lots of varied techniques uh, and stuff like that. Obviously, the arm bar has been a thing you love, but have you got different bits from each gym? Like, what do you think has affected you? Um, well, to be honest, I'm not really, it's going to sound a bit scandalous, but I'm not really a big fan of arm bars anymore. And I don't oh. really get them much. Ooh. No, it's just an Instagram name now. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of more into leg locks, but I think, so like yes. when I went to Mill, yeah, leg locks are fantastic. I love them so much. <laughs> when I went to Mill Hill, I'd only started doing like nogi regularly there. And mm -hmm. so with the like leg lock classes, I was like, oh, like, you know, like before I was, you know, the typical jiu-jitsu person being like, oh, shouldn't do any heel hooks, things like that. But like training at a gym where, you know, you're taught it has definitely opened my eyes a bit more. And at RGA, they do teach them as well. So. Okay. Even though, I, I mean, I guess RGA are a bit more gi-based, perhaps? Definitely, or, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I could imagine that that was sort of the influence behind you not wanting to do heel hooks and stuff like that. So is that, is the fact that you're now into uh, um, leg locks more of a, like, testament of the fact that you're more into no gi? <laughs> yeah. I think like because I've started to like nogi more, I feel like you have to sort of learn that side of it as well. Yeah. Because it's it's getting a lot more popular. And with the, you know, IBGGF saying they're gonna mm. let uh, reaps happen and hill hooks happen from brown belt. Um so Well you're gonna need to get a belt yeah. up then. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm training for it now. <laughs> so that when I'm a brown belt, it's not so so much of a shock. I don't want to get hill hooked in like 15 seconds. So I know that. How do you think? Like, um, we literally just recorded the podcast on it. We've not released it yet. Um, dif- like differences between gi and no gi, because we sort of concluded that they were quite different sports in a lot of ways. And you're saying yeah. that you've really changed your game because like armbar to heel hook is not like it, it's a really drastic change. Yeah, I think I think they are really different because it's like different ways of controlling someone Like you can't just like hold the gi and sort of pin them down. And it's mm-hmm. I think it's a lot more athletic based as well. You know, you've got to be fit. I think that makes sense, and that's why I mean you could you could think of uh, Nicky Rodriguez as a good example of that, right? Yeah. I think what you said is is actually really true. <laughs> that's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, he's huge he's... tank. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely all natural. It's no, nothing wrong. Nothing going on there. <laughs> there's no steroids at all. He's, oh yeah, he only yeah. he only put on uh, what was it like a, a hundred pounds over one summer after he left college and got to university. I think it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, unless he's got like the best diet in the world, that's like two thirds of me. Uh, yes, the best <laughs> yeah. diet in the world and mad genes. Yeah. <laughs> in any case, uh, yeah, it's a good point. Like he was purely athletic, and he has come in and smashed straight to the top of the game. Um, yeah. As a purple belt, right? Just newly promoted purple belt. Yeah. Didn't he get given purple belt like on the ADCC podium or something? <laughs> oh yeah, he yeah he did yeah. That feels like Nonsense. that was last month, but it was actually a year ago, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, nothing's happened since then. Like it's yeah. it's kind of I forget how long ago stuff happened. Yeah, I'm I can't have, I can't even place things in time anymore. I'm like yeah. oh the other day, and that's like. Yeah, here Time's lost all meaning over lockdown. <laughs> yeah. And here we are. So you're still managing yeah. to train though at the moment. Yeah, I've I invested in some good mats for the for the flat. So if we are in lockdown again, I have some mats for some secret training. <laughs> and um yeah, like at RGA it's like household bubble training. So thankfully yeah. my boyfriend trains, which is good. That's good. Oh, and then it's sort of I don't know who's even teaching there now I don't know what's happened to the Nogi, nogi stuff there. surely it's Ed, Ed Ingemel's I'm not sure I'm not sure but then again like at the moment gyms are being a little bit hush hush I think mm-hmm. sort of you know if the whole like I don't really know what to call it but sort of like restrictions as well Mm, yeah and some gyms aren't so i think part of the trouble is you don't a lot of people don't even know exactly what the rules are yeah so you're afraid of breaking them because you don't even know which ones you have to stick with and which ones you can't and people aren't prepared to just close down the whole gym no No, i mean i feel like the government has just forgotten that jiu-jitsu exists or they don't even know what jiu-jitsu is probably more likely they don't know what jiu-jitsu is (laughs) can you imagine bojo and a gi (laughs) <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah we need, like you're right we need putin putin would sort it out it, it, he wouldn't forget <laughs> uh, i mean i, I kind of wonder how much of an effect this is going to have like long term because on well, no one's, or like yeah on the sport uh, and not just jiu-jitsu muay thai mma everything because it means that no one's joining plenty of people are gonna not do it for months and then never come back uh, honest yep. opinion i think that will happen um i think i i'm kind of concerned that even after you know if if they came out with a vaccine tomorrow and we were back in the gyms by christmas still concerned about what's going to happen over the next couple of years yeah because you don't even know if the vaccine will work and secondly like if anyone if you sort of if you get out of that routine of training it's quite difficult to get back to it mm-hmm. yeah you know, especially like if it's an, a blue belt as well. I mean, they give up quite easily. So <laughs> let alone like a lockdown, um, you know, there's the whole like blue belt blues and everything. So no, it'd be upsetting if I didn't see some familiar faces back at the gym 
once this is all over. I think it will definitely happen. Yeah. I mean, Alex isn't even at the same gym anymore, so he'll be yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm concerned my gym uh, just won't open up again, honestly. We're already concerned that it's kind of gone too far and the gym's not going to be able to keep it going, but I guess it's we'll see. Open, even uh, for, like, training or... It's just no way to do it safely. Like, there are, there are like, really, like, the gym's not well set up to... It's not well ventilated. It's there's nowhere for them to wait. Yeah. I, I don't really know if we can open up or not. There's a lot of stuff. Um, they uh, there's a lot of stuff. We kind of wonder because they provided like a discounted membership. If you back when we didn't know if there was going to be like a, a break in the in the rent, and now I think they've kind of written themselves yeah. into a corner. I won't get into the finances of my gym because I'm basically just speculating about it through hearsay. Yeah. And there are so many rumors going around at the moment. I've no idea. Um, nonetheless yeah but i mean even then like a lot of people are moving out of london i think which obviously most of the gyms are here yeah and the rent's really high in london for gyms like you know if you if you close for like five six months you've got absolutely no income yeah you can't pay that rent i think unless you're a big gym maybe like rga you know specifically the hq he can yeah. like they can probably more or less deal with it because of how on it of the scale of the business but um yeah for the smaller gyms uh, i think it's it's a real problem real issue yeah so if you're whole... still if you're still training in rga does that mean you're gonna potentially compete or anything at some point because i just realized like you're one of the few people who's actually managed to keep who's actually gonna be keeping up like consistent training yeah, I mean, I'd be great in an absolute because if like just training with Daniel, I'm going to, if I come across any like 75 kilo women, I'd be fine. But, you know, I was looking at um, competing uh, in November and it was like a grappling industries tournament in Berlin. But today that got rescheduled to uh, March. So okay. mm. I'm kind of keeping an eye on competitions, but they're always being rescheduled. Like I was going to do the trials in december in poland but i don't i'm not going to book anything because i feel like that's going to be rescheduled as well uh -huh. yeah. i think poland it could that there's maybe more of a chance it won't be but yeah you never know i think poland's a little bit more yeah <laughs> it's got the inside knowledge it's just a bit more yeah. flexible when with these sorts of events i think um Okay. but what about you know competitions like if th there's the new one coming out like submission uh what is it called uh oh, there's one this week series? there's one this weekend right submission yeah. series um, yeah you know if i had the uh, opportunity to go on a um you know on a show that would be great i think mm -hmm. generally it's you know if you've got shows like polaris they're looking for like really high level uh, black belts and things okay. like that because it's like elite uh, fighters that they're looking for right like grapple fest um happened a couple months ago and that has some really awesome fights but it's generally though, I, but, I think... but you've been on grapple fest right yeah i went on that um uh november 2019 for molly mccann yeah that was a year ago yeah i thought yeah um but it's also quite, I think it's quite tough to match women as well. You know, trying to find women of like a similar rank and weight is just, Some I can imagine pool. a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, and Nogi as well. Like, I feel like there's not as many women training Nogi as Gi. Hmm. So. Okay. Yeah, I could, I could see that being the case, actually. So yeah. I can see it be difficult. I wouldn't turn it down. I wouldn't turn it down. Sure. If anyone sure. else. Me. Right. So match well matches you might do then it's going to be shows i mean you have got the advantage of being at a bit of a higher level than like within your weight class and your experience level than me and alex like, i don't think me and alex are going to get on any shows anytime soon apart from um battle grapple or something like that blue belt super fights yeah. um so you could end up but you could end up hypothetically on grapple fest or something like that so i think with grapple fest 
they don't want to run another show unless it's um, they can have an audience. I don't oh, think really? they like the idea of it being behind closed doors. I'm not too sure because. I mean, whenever I've done Grapple Fest, you have this amazing crowd. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can get that same atmosphere without it. But I don't know if you've um, been there or seen it sort of like in a nightclub. So there's oh, a wow. bar straight near you. So as soon as you get off the, off the mat, you can have a drink, which is why I love it so much. Um, and yeah, I just don't think they, they can get that same atmosphere. Nah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to have a bar. That's true. No. probably no crowd and it is in <laughs> they normally do it in liverpool right yeah it's it's always been in liverpool yeah they're not so, doing that right now yeah tier three <laughs> restrictions not <gonna> <laughs> no, no, all right no. have you been invited on any other shows apart from grapple fest or is that the biggest one so far that's the biggest one i did uh do battle grapple a couple of times mm -hmm. um back at like maybe three years ago now i thought um, like two blue belt matches which the first one went badly I bet because you know like it ends in a draw or a um, mm -hmm. submission so like if you're getting completely destroyed on points you, and you survive it's still a draw but you know it's not a draw yeah so that's happened um that happened a couple of times um but then again deci decisions never work in my favor either so but, you know, I'd, I'd do it again. I'd do it again. I, I think Battle Grapple's cool. I mean, it's a little odd sometimes having the less experienced guys, but you get people mm -hmm. just coming out the woodwork who are really good fun, who you wouldn't get otherwise. Yeah, like you want someone exciting, right? And if they happen to be a blue belt or a white belt even, it's still, you know, it's still great. And white belts can have the most insane movements, which are fantastic <laughs> to watch as well. So... <laughs> that's the thing about mma shows the really inexperienced guys they're sometimes the best matches yeah they've got <laughs> a lot of a lot of passion i think uh, they actually, want to prove as, yeah as long as they have fairly decent conditioning and they don't just guess out in the first minute <laughs> you don't need conditioning you just need like real determination <laughs> <laughs> pure adrenaline running through your veins um yeah so i actually Sorry, go where, ahead, Robbie. So where do you think you are going to compete again in that case? I honestly don't know. I don't know. I'm, I would like to... I mean, fingers crossed the Euros are on in January, but I don't yep. think it's going to happen. Unless they host it in a country where it's a bit more relaxed with rules or they have just like a really low um, sort of like transition rate or something, whatever they call it now. Mm -hmm. Not many cases. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's kind of up in the air uh, do you actually like competing as much as i thought you did because i'm not sure because i said that and you, you're kind of like mm -hmm. no i like competing it's just the week before is horrible yeah and so i hate the week before but then once i'm on the mat it's fine it's just that kind of build up um yeah, do you find any up, do you think about it more more deeply in the sense that do you think of it as as like a necessary evil and do you find maybe some kind of pleasure because like for me um this might be weird but like i find it like a challenge that i need to overcome and it's kind of like a way to challenge whoa my mic just went <laughs> um and like a way for me to challenge myself mentally do you kind of see it that way or is it just sort of like shit i just need to get on with this <laughs> i think it's good to challenge yourself you know um other than having an actual fight there's nothing that could really um simulate it so and you can you know say if i'm thinking of um uh, if i'm like working on a specific technique or something or like a different variation of a guard like i will go into a competition trying to do that exact thing mm -hmm. it doesn't always work obviously but sometimes like that's the best way to test how right. you're doing. Because right. like, usually you don't know this other person, but like as a woman, you tend to fight the same people over and over again. But that makes it a little bit more fun. Because hmm. then, you know, you can have like little rivalries and things like that. But it's all, it's all a lot of fun anyway. So. What, is, nice. what about after the competition? Do you always feel like 
a euphoric moment once the stress is all gone and you're like you've done the competition i guess yeah. if you're losing then it's it sucks uh, if you have lost yeah. it sucks but i guess there's like a a light at the end of the tunnel where we you, you get to the after the competition and even if you've had that stress it's almost like it's a a, a sweeter ending afterwards is that kind of would you say how you feel as well yeah I mean once I'm off the mat I'm like oh thank god that's like done now and if I have a medal that's even better but otherwise like I'm just happy it's over and <laughs> I get to eat what I want um, and I you know did the best I could so yeah but it's quite euphoric like you know you because it I think you kind of you can um, make it appear sort of like bigger in your head like more sure. sort of stressful when it is just like you know now a seven minute match it's not really you know I think like you just it's just all of the adrenaline as well you get that like fight or flight kind of feeling mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then once you're done you're like oh that was really good and you can also chat to the the lady after as well you can make you can become friends so it's it's not so like um competitive yeah how come you think why is the pool that small like what like why are there so few women doing like i don't know because there always seem to be quite a lot of girls in the jiu-jitsu class mm -hmm. there just don't seem to be as many women who go on and get really serious about competing yeah i do you know i don't really know why some women would what would want to compete and why some women wouldn't i think it's more like a lot of women just don't ever do it and then they get to maybe like purple belt and they're like oh I still I still not done it and they're just not interested mm -hmm. plus there's not that many women compared to guys like if you think there's some guys that even get to like black belt and don't compete because they just have absolutely no interest in it and then generally like you know you lose quite a few people as the belt as they progress up the belts as well mm. so. But yeah, it would be nice to see bigger divisions. But then it's also a matter of like, you know, you'd look at a division and it'd be sort of like one person. So you'd be like, oh, I'll wait till more people sign up. And then no one ever signs up because they're all waiting for the other person. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's a bit. So we need like a, we need like a system where you, you'll put it in and you'll commit to paying if that many people sign up yeah like grappling industries is good for that because you can kind of put your name down and then pay at a later date but then sometimes like people just don't pay mm, so that's true you're waiting for them to confirm registration but i think that's a good idea you get you get a, an idea of how many women might be in your division yeah I've, I, I i like that about um smooth comp like the the visibility yeah. you get on competitions is is pretty awesome Mm. yeah yeah when, so are you going to be sticking with the nogi stuff from now on do you like it that much more and is that where we're going to see you in the competitions you know i'm training both gi and nogi just as much as one another probably more gi at the moment because there's not many nogi classes on um i'd say i would sort of like whatever was offered to me i would i would do both but generally, a lot of the, um, you know, say for like the shows, for example, they're quite nogi focused, I feel. Mm -hmm. But like it's kind of going that way. But it's more I fun still, to watch. Yeah, it is more fun to watch. There's like barely any stalling and you do so many more submissions. But I don't know. I feel like I would just, like once competitions come back, I'll just do like as many as I can back to back. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I feel that. And are you going to be... Because I remember before, I think you said after Purple Belt, you'd consider doing MMA. And if that was the original reason uh, that you got into it, are you going to, are we going to see you striking or anything? Do you know you what? Think... I'd be so terrified. Like, only if they couldn't hit me back. But I know <laughs> they would. And then I'd... I already got a broken nose, so I wouldn't want a nose, like, kind of put on the other side of my face. But... <laughs> I think I would try it once. Yeah. At least striking. Um, so I think I could be quite good at kicking. I think. <laughs> nice. <a> chunky leg. <laughs> but maybe one day, 
you know because I remember I always wanted to be like Ronda Rousey which makes me sound like a child now but back when she was cool I wanted to be like Ronda Rousey (laughs) she's actually appearing on camera again now so that's a good start it only took like five years she's got a YouTube (laughs) channel and everything did you see the hot ones with her I saw the hot ones with her yes you watch hot ones no, I haven't watched it. No. Hot Ones is uh, an interview show where the only the only premise like Sean Evans, really good interviewer, to be fair. Yes. But the only premise of the show is that they sit there and they eat spicy chicken wings, and it gets steadily hotter, and they have like seven. And the first one is like below sriracha, and the last one is like don't put any more than a dab on here, or you're gonna have you're gonna go to hospital, kind of kind of hot wing. It's quite fun. Okay. It's stupid, yeah. but it's, it, it works really well. I don't know why, but she appeared on that, which I think is the first time I've seen Ronda Rousey on camera since. Mm. I think she's an awesome ambassador for like female combat sports. And I don't know. I'm always not sure she is. Why? Because she's really horrible sometimes. She's like. <laughs> ego as well, hasn't she? I think yes. She's quite yeah, um, even like it has been so long since since she fought Misha Tate, and even in that Hot Ones interview, she was still being a bitch to Misha Tate. <laughs> I don't think she lets go of anything. I think she just carries it. Maybe carries it for ages. I think she's really charismatic, and there's a lot going for her. I don't know if I'd call her a good ambassador for women's <laughs> MMA. Uh, yeah. Any, anyway, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, I I wonder then, um, what are the things that you're kind of looking, uh, looking to like? What are your goals uh, right now as a as an athlete, as a competitor? Like, what are you looking? Do you do you kind of think about that? Like, what um, I want to be improving in the next some like next time next few months or something are you looking at like oh um you know really want to get to a certain belt you said that you kind of want to stay at purple so maybe maybe that's not the case but just wondering if if yeah i mean i think the biggest goal i have at the moment is sort of like it sounds silly but like getting back to like a, a weight class that suits me a bit more so um, for, for ADCC trials, it's sort of like under 60 or over 60. So I want to get down to under 60, which I haven't been for about seven years. So <laughs> it's proving quite difficult at the moment because I'm mm-hmm. like trying to diet and then I'm the exact same weight as I was like a month ago. So I think the age. Um, oh, is now's not the me. time. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I'm like, I've been lifting more. So I've been working with an SNC coach called Rob Nipman and we've been, he's been like giving me sort of um, like a program. So it's good to be actually going to the gym. Like I'm going to the gym a lot more because before, you know, I would sort of like go once a week or so, or something, but now I've got so much time on my hands. I might as well work on getting stronger and less injury prone. So I, I seem to always get injured with like the silliest things. Like yeah, I, I think... hurt my elbow the other day. <laughs> that would definitely, I guess, with strength training, that would definitely help with injury yeah, prevention. If you're doing heel hooks and shit, that's not going to help at all. You're 100% that's getting scary. more injured if you're in leg locks, but this, this is a whole yeah. ba- another battle to fight. <laughs> well, but the strength training will in some way help that, I would imagine, because you are strengthening the ligaments and jo- whatever, so and tendons. So that's it's a, it's interesting that that people don't see that more as a benefit to their training when it comes to jiu-jitsu yeah i think i think it's because a lot of people can um sort of do really well without having to do snc and you know they have like lazy jiu-jitsu as well mm-hmm. but i kind of feel like now is a good time to try and look more like an athlete <laughs> you know i want to just like look like i want someone to think like oh yeah she actually does train she's not like a blob <laughs> so get some abs that would be a good thing all right then why do you think jiu-jitsu athletes are i'll say it i think jiu-jitsu athletes are probably some of the worst athletes on the planet like i I, think i I would agree with that right like 
the people at the top yeah. of the game, they're at the top of the game and they are world class athletes. And then the drop off after that top like percent is so fast. <laughs> you have extremes. You have someone who's like a casual grappler who's probably got a bit of a belly and they're not very athletic. And then you have like people who are like really strong and athletic. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of feel like it's just as you get better, you don't really have to move so much. I think you, <laughs> I if, you, if, you, if you feel the same way, but you know, like, especially in the gi, you don't really have to, if you get really good, you can kind of do a few, you know, less movements and things like that. Yeah, it's less dynamic, like you said, less less athletic in the gi, I guess. It's called efficiency. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's, is. That, that is the right word. You become a bit more efficient with your movements. And you just slowly burn less and less calories by by doing jujitsu. Yeah, that's fair. So you're actually not trying to fall into that trap. You're actually trying to get to the athletic side of things. Yeah, I want to look jacked. <laughs> you're not going to be under sixty then. No, I want to just lose every ounce of body fat and then just be complete muscle. Uh, but I, d I don't think my frame could, like, I think I'm just, I'm always going to be like a middleweight anyway, but I might as well experiment, you know, see this as an experiment. Because I was over 60, like, I can't fight someone who's like 90 kilos. Like, I just die. Is that yeah. really how the weight division's in, was that for ADCC? Yeah, it's just two weight divisions. So wow. most, most, yeah, it's so bad because... You know, like if you're like 69, you know, you're not really that far off 60, but then you you're could fight getting... someone who's... You could fight Abby Garcia. Oh. Yeah. That's Someone madness. like her, for sure. That's so, crazy. Then... Yeah, that I, I could, yeah. And even like if you're 69 and you're meant to drop 10 kilos, that's, that's quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm sort of around... 65 at the moment so it's not too bad but you know I'm, my heart goes out to girls that have to cut like 10 kilos just to be under 60 yeah. I'm sure there are a few that have to do that I mean is that you you say you've been dieting and stuff and staying at the same weight is that like what you've been for a while at 65 or have you cut down from like 69 or something I've lost 70. like 1.5 kilos in a month. <laughs> oh no, no! I think that's a good thing. That means that you, because if you had start, because if you'd started off at like 70 kilos, and you like worked hard at it and cut down to 65, and you're like, I got to get under 60, I'll be like, no. yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> It'll be a long way. No, I started sort of around 67 ish, give or take half a kilo. Um, but I was 64 before lockdown, so I was kind of getting there and then gained a bunch of weight back. That's what I mean, though. I, I don't think I think lockdown's a great time to do conditioning because you mm -hmm. can have you can recover much easier because you can rest and eat. I don't think lockdown's a good time to try and get into a lower weight class. Honest opinion. It's going to be so hard. Like yeah, you're just not, just, you're not even walking you anywhere. Keep eating. <laughs> I know, like I'm. I think I've just been so bored because I've just graduated, and so it's really difficult to find a job. Mm. Like, almost oh, yeah. impossible now. Um, and so, like, you kind of just want to eat because it, you know, if you're watching Netflix or, or something, like you just, you know, you need something to do with your hands, so you just like start eating some crisps. Um, but I'm trying to like just stop that all now. <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> I did not do well at maintaining my weight when I was back at my parents' house. So I don't know if it's the same for you, but again, that's another thing that's just not going to help. Yeah, I imagine they're like making you meals and everything. Mm -hmm. So you're probably having a few more carbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, was, it was that. And all there was at my parents' house for working out was a, uh, was a squat rack. So weight, weight divisions, I don't know where I'm going to end up, but I'm not going to worry about it until March because... <laughs> If I start worrying about it now, I'm going to be worrying a lot. Yeah, I think there's too, there's too much going on to worry about weight. I should probably yeah. calm down a bit. That's what I say. Just worry on the yeah. conditioning part. Sort out the weight yeah. closer to the event. You'll be fine. Okay, mm -hmm. so Abby, yeah. t tell me. I want to I hear this 
uh, because we haven't really concluded this whilst we we're talking about Nogi versus Gi. What is, okay. in your opinion, <laughs> do you have the preference or do you like them equally or do you like one more for certain reasons or is it like hard? I, I prefer Nogi to Gi. How's heel hooks now though? It has to be Nogi. I would say Nogi, I prefer... So, like, in a ratio, 55 to gi. Like, oh, okay. So, that's, that's you know I mean? still like, pretty conservative, fine. like, pretty um, liberal, I would say. <laughs> yeah, because I like all the lapel stuff, you know, the kind of threading it through the legs and half guard, even though it never works. I still <laughs> am quite, quite stubborn trying to make it work for me. Um, but I, I just think no is far more exciting. Like, I'm more... If I was to do a nogi class versus a gi class, I'd be much happier in the nogi class. Hmm. It's not to say I'm better at it. Um, what about competitions it. then? What about competitions? Because I'm guessing you've competed in both extensively. So, like, do you find that a nogi competition is maybe like more boring, uh, or or more difficult in some way, or, or is it nogi that's you know the one? Do you know, I do worse in nogi competitions. Like, that's the sad thing. <laughs> I, like, love it so much, and I do much worse. Um, I'm the same. So, but, yeah, I wonder, what it, I wonder what it is. I think it's because it's just, like, it can go either way, can't it? You can be winning, and then you'll be like, oh, I'm winning, and then get footlocked or something. So. Yeah. Okay. I've never understood it. I, I, I kind of wonder if um, gyms like Tenth Planet ruin it for everyone else, because I feel like I'm good at no gi. But I'm training against people who train no gi and gi no more than equally, if not more in the gi, right? So I feel like I'm better at no gi. Yeah. I get to competition against Tenth Planet people or, you know, people who've trained like 90% no gi. It all goes horribly wrong for me at that point. I don't know if you found yeah. the same thing, if you found a trend of the gyms you train against or anything. Or Do you know what? Um... I can't, I don't think I've ever fought anyone from 10th Planet. Oh, really? Um, no, never. Uh, not in no, yeah, never. So I couldn't really, I couldn't really have an opinion on that. But I think, I'm just trying to think of all the people I fought Nogi against. And they're probably kind of, like, so a few girls I fought Nogi against have either been European champions in no gi or gi. So, hmm. yeah, I'm not too sure. Or, okay. or both. So just high-level competition, that's what it kind of went down to. Sure. Yeah, and I make stupid mistakes, always. <laughs> Very silly mistakes. Yeah, but honest opinion, I think it comes mostly down to training time at one particular one. So I don't know what that's going to mean if you're training... Uh, RGA and doing more gi than no gi but I mean what I'd like to do is when everything opens up sort of like supplement my no gi training at other academies which mm -hmm. is can't, can't really do that now but um, I was sort of doing that before trying to go to some like no gi open mats which I found helped a lot but generally it's just mat time isn't it if someone's training exclusively no gi they're going to be a bit more confident as well so I wonder um, then how, um, cause, cause this is, to me, is quite interesting where, you know, if you're going in between gyms, so like your main gym is RGA, but then you're, you you want to supplement somewhere else. How does that work out financially? Because it's, um, you know, you're paying a, a membership monthly membership, I would imagine at RGA, or I don't know if you have some sort of different deal, <laughs> maybe. No, it's, I still pay. Still yeah, pay. yeah, <laughs> and then the uh, and then the person and then the strength conditioning as well. So, so then, but yes, but to to go to other gyms, I'm guessing you you kind of paying. It's not a full membership, right? No, I mean I would pay um, per class, or if it's like an open mat, sometimes it's free. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. And then if you know the person, it's a little bit different. Uh, but to be honest, like, I just don't, I just lose focus of how much I spend on jujitsu. <laughs> to me, it, I just don't, I don't consider it. I'm just like, that's just a necessary thing to, to pay yeah. for. 
so everything else in my life suffers because of jiu-jitsu i've i'm the same as well when it came when i when i was playing for for uh for memberships i remember when i was telling people like oh yeah i'll pay 120 pounds uh per month for my membership and people like you're fucking mental i was like no it's just it's just part of my my operating cost (laughs) each month it's quite a lot when you think about it though isn't it like it is I yeah if you have... as soon as i pay then... like 30 quid for a gym yeah 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 but if you think about it like a night out would cost like maybe 50 pound mm. depending if you got free drinks or not could be less <laughs> could be more if you're a girl yeah <laughs> if you're a guy you're not getting free drinks <laughs> no so i'm like if anyone ever says oh you spend a lot of money on gym and stuff i'm like well i'm not going out drinking or maybe you are. I, I used to try and do both. It's it's not um it's not good. <laughs> the two don't mix. I you knew you have but to. Yeah, I, I think you knew you have to. Yeah. Plus in Southampton, like it's so cheap tre- cheap to go out on a night out. Yeah. There is good. You know, quad vods. I'd say literally criminally cheap. <laughs> like yeah. I, I don't think that was legal. What many a liver had been damaged <laughs> in Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> We'll do a we'll do a reunion at some point back to a back to Jester's or So Bar or something. <laughs> yes. I would love to. I'd be so down for it. Nice. Get on the National Express, Southampton. <laughs> down the M3. Yeah. Awesome. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about, Abby? That we've not we've not gone over. No, I think we've gone over everything. I feel like my life is so boring and I can't <laughs> really too. bring much to the table at the moment. It's <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard at the moment because there's not anything immediate on. I think that's the trouble. Because yeah. a lot of the time I'd ask people what they're doing next, you know, what's mm-hmm. lined up and everyone's like, staying just indoors. just don't know. Staying yeah. at home. Yeah. There's no holidays, no competitions, like, you know, restricted training. It's just yeah. It's not a good time. Uh, we never asked you about, um, you went up to Iceland and stuff, right? Oh, yeah, that was so great. Yeah, you, yeah. You went all the way to Iceland. Did you go to Iceland for Iceland or did you just go for Iceland so you could train jiu-jitsu while we weren't allowed to here? It's for the jiu-jitsu. I spent so Mjolnir? much money. Just... Yeah, oh, it's amazing. Oh, oh, wow. I I cried when we had to go home. Because <laughs> I knew what I was coming home to, like no gyms being open. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. I totally recommend um, anyone to go. Like the gym, the facility, it's got like a hot tub. It's massive. Um, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's interesting that they have such a like big facility. Is it like, and a lot of people training, right? It's It's quite a busy gym. Yeah, I mean, at the time, uh, I think because of the because of COVID, it wasn't they didn't have that many sort of members training with us. Probably because they might have been worried that we were going to bring the virus <laughs> to the academy. Fair enough. Uh, and the the camp was quite. It wasn't as big as it usually was. I think it's usually like two hundred people, but it was only about ninety. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, like the classes were full. And they've got quite a few high-level guys in um, in Iceland. Like at Milner, like, there was, like, this guy called Axel, who's probably, like, 60, 65 kilos, a black belt. He was just so good. And, yeah, it's, like, those are high-level guys. Did you see Gunny Nelson? <laughs> I did. He taught yeah, a class. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was great. Nice. I never got a picture with him. I don't know why. I think because I thought, oh, I'll get one later in the week. Mm. Um, but yeah, he never taught happens. some guard passing. That's good. Cool. Yeah, I never have. You got to do it there and then. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's a really cool, cool trip. And did you manage to see any of the actual landscapes, or <laughs> just mainly jitsu? Yeah, did you do Iceland at all? <laughs> we we saw the um, I can't even remember what it's called. At uh, the Golden Circle, we went on the Golden Circle tour. Okay, yeah, the classic. Right. And that was the only thing we did, other than just train. We were meant to go whale watching, but the weather was too bad. 
Okay. So you have to leave it. But it's like more reason to come back. So we'll go there <laughs> um, next July. And how was that in terms of, is it, is there like a sort of week membership that you, they have like a package sort of thing where you can just go? No, just, this was the camp, right? The Globetrotters camp. Yeah, Globetrotters. Ah. Yeah, you, it's about 259 euros. And then you get sort of like, it's basically like four or five classes a day, maybe more. Wow. Um, so you could train all day, every day. And there's like loads of open mats. I think on the last day we had an open mat that was like four hours and I made sure I stayed for the entire four hours so I knew like when I get back there's going to be no training just nothing just your mats Uh, in your living room yeah and they have like social events going on so you've got like you can go out for dinner with everyone from the camp so and then a party at the end that's awesome because Milner has a bar so (laughs) <laughs> There's like a Viking bar in the gym. Hell yeah. yeah Are you drinking good. out of like horns and shit? <laughs> I did see a horn. Uh, I didn't get to drink out of one, but there is oh. one there. So I think you can just like go behind the bar and grab it and start pouring <laughs> some pints. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, I, I was tempted to go on one at some point. I quite liked... I, it kind of, at the same time, looks really interesting and really pretentious. The Zen camp in Poland... Zen. Yeah, that um, just happened, didn't it, last week? Yeah, uh, so the Zen camp, Alex, it's like, um, I don't know, they must have just found, stumbled across it, but it's like a, like this little Japanese-style village it, or, or, and, and stuff. Yeah. Like all, all the buildings look like they're from Japan. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's just green around. Everyone gets, like, white geese, um, and it's all, like, there's, like, meditation and yoga and stuff, whereas, oh, like, the diff- I think the different camps have slightly different themes. Okay. And I can't yeah. decide if it seems too pretentious or actually if I really like the idea of the Zen camp. I know. I, I like the sound of that. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Yeah. I've been looking at their Instagram stories and it's just amazing. Like they're in Italy now at a castle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's that's like a, so. it's a well-known thing then, the, the BJJ Globetrotters. I've, I haven't actually heard about it. You know, no, yeah, look them up because you can still go on them and they're being really cool about coronavirus if anything gets cancelled. So I was cool. thinking of doing I was thinking of doing one. I, I've been thinking of doing one like for the past three years. So once again, I'm thinking of doing one next year. <laughs> yeah, I think all you need is a coronavirus test uh, 72 hours before you go. So as long as that's fine, you mm-hmm. can go. If I send you a test at the border. So that kind oh, of... Wow. Yeah, you weren't allowed in otherwise. Very <laughs> unpleasant. They what, they be then, like, throat. Yeah, it's like a little, um, they're like little pods and you walk in, have it stuck up your nose and then you walk out the other side. But you see it being done to everyone in front of you. <laughs> and like, I thought it was just kind of like up to this bit here. But no, it's all the way back. It's like, oh, it feels it? like it's poking your brain. I can't remember why I had one of these things done before, but I'm sure I have like years ago, not for coronavirus, obviously. Um, Yeah. And it's awful. I would not want it done again. But if I have to, to train, I would, but other than (laughs) that, I wouldn't. A necessary sacrifice (laughs) to the jujitsu gods. Yeah, and you pay for the pleasure as well. It's not cheap. (laughs) I'd rather spend it on something much nicer true 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 we hope you enjoyed that episode if you did please consider subscribing to the podcast and checking us out on youtube facebook and instagram under the name combat thoughts we'll see you next time